a brand new supercritical turbine has been developed. The 10 megawatt unit is roughly the size of a desk and can power over 10,000 homes, making it to be one of the smallest yet most efficient turbines in the world. But is this new CO2 critical prototype going to displace the conventional steam powered turbine? One of the first reaction turbines was actually considered to be this Eola pile and it was invented back in 1 AD, but it utilizes the same concept where water is expanded into steam and drives a kinetic motion. But the modern turbine generator system is actually pretty complex, and we're still trying to figure out how to improve the design of this machine. There are many different designs including steam, water, gas, and even wind. But more specifically, we will look at the pressurized steam and gas variants. A steam turbine is a little bit more universal because the steam is produced in a boiler by utilizing the heat of coal or some other type of fuel. And then the steam goes through the turbine to rotate it. Whereas a gas turbine, the compressed air is passed through the combustion chamber and this fuel is combusted to further increase the temperature and pressure of the air. Now, like I said, there's more than just the turbine itself and combined gas cycle turbines can be a little bit more efficient because they utilize waste heat for additional power generation. But an overall steam generator is more flexible in that you could use different fuel sources for the boiler. The biggest turbines in the world are over one gigawatt, and there are many technical challenges associated with building this kind of sizable unit. But more specifically, the blades and the rotors have to be designed to high tolerances in order to handle this extreme pressure. Steam turbines work because they convert the thermal or kinetic energy to mechanical energy by using rotating blades. The torque generated by the steam force on the rotating blades is then transferred to the rotor. These turbines can range from a single to a multi-stage machine. And a stage basically consists of a set of stator blades and a set of rotating blades and they are designed to provide the most efficient flow path. However, as the steam turbine stages progress, the steam loses pressure and energy, so the last stage requires very strong and large blades. Even today, we are still trying to figure out how to increase the efficiency through simulation software, along with obtaining new alloys. You could use supercritical water to increase efficiency, but this requires a very high pressure up to 220 bar, which is 220 times atmospheric pressure. But supercritical is definitely an intriguing idea because the material is not really a solid liquid or gas. It's more dense than steam, so components like the turbine and pump can be considerably smaller and more efficient. This is where supercritical carbon dioxide comes into play because it can be supercritical above 30 degrees Celsius at a relatively low pressure at 74 bar. It moves more like a fluid, so there is less work needed to convert all this into kinetic energy. In a closed loop system, it can achieve an efficiency up to 50%, roughly 10 more percent than steam turbines with considerably less space used. But this also means that you need a different type of build which can handle supercritical CO2. Many laboratories have researched this idea, including Sandia National Laboratories and they have tested a closed loop Bratton cycle. CO2 is heated, energy is extracted through a turbine, and then it's cooled and compressed, thus returning to the cycle. They used electrical heating, but this power source can be from nuclear or fossil fuels. The recent reveal of a pilot plant is a very good step forward for power generation, and this was a collaboration project involving Southwest Research, GTI Energy, and GE. The 10 megawatt unit is considerably smaller, with a 10% efficiency gain. It can run from a variety of heat sources and has a four-stage rotor assembly. And the overall rotor weighs 82 kg, making the turbine to be one of the highest power density ratios, second only to rocket engine turbo pumps. The casing was made from a nickel chromium super alloy, which exhibits high strength with highly corrosive resistant properties. So one of the biggest challenges to this type of design is that the RPM is going to be crazy high. It's a lot smaller and more compact, but there'll need to be some sort of gear reduction. With no direct drive, there is less control over the turbine and its power output. It's also very unlikely that this will supplement a 1 gigawatt steam turbine. In the future, this unit could be scaled up to 450 megawatts. They claim that this will include an oxy-fuel combustor that can burn natural gas, allowing for higher temperatures with CO2 and water as only byproducts. 
but ultimately the design of a higher tolerant turbine which can handle supercritical states with improved alloys is very beneficial to the future of power generation. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this, so please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.